outreach and evangelism. And we have a good problem. This church has grown by God's grace faster than we thought it would. It's like this lady. She's complaining to her friend. And she says, you know what? Our church is doing another three-year capital campaign pledge drive. Ugh. And her friend looks at her and says, in a real gentle, loving way, I once had a son. And when, when I got pregnant, boy, my husband and I, we right away had to spend money to fix a nursery in our house. And we bought the crib and all the infant supplies and everything and repainted the room. And then when that little boy got older, we sent him off to school for the first time. And while it was that expensive, we had to buy school clothes and school supplies and all these activity and registration fees. But as he kept getting older, he eventually got to high school. And oh my goodness, when he got to high school, this guy ate us out of house and home. He was always eating. And then we had to pay for his car insurance. Have you paid boys' car insurance lately? And then on top of that, you know, he's in all these extracurricular activities. And then he needed our car. And he used up all of our gas on dates. And, and we, when he finally graduated from high school, we were like, hallelujah. But then he went to college, and that was even worse. And this went on, and finally she said, you know what, but remember how my son died in an accident? And now he doesn't talk to us on the phone anymore. And your church is like that. Your church, just like my little boy, when it's growing and alive and active, it'll always cost you. And it's true, you know that. Guess how much it costs to pay our monthly utilities of, of all of our facilities here at Beautiful Savior. A month on average, $10,000. That's what our heating, cooling, electric bill is. I'm like, $10,000? Are you kidding me? And then you throw on top of that staff, payroll, and, and you put on top of all the ministry programming and foreign and international and local missions. And it reminds me that somebody has to pay something always for a church to run. But then I think, what would be a better use of our funds than, than telling others about Jesus Christ and preaching and teaching the word of God to our children and becoming devoted disciples to discipleship and doing everything that we can so that the church of God, by God's grace, grows and the kingdom of God expands. That's what today is about. That's what I'm going to ask you to do. And you know what? In the 49 years of this church's history, there's a boatload of people that have rolled up their sleeves and made sacrificial, just amazing commitments to get this church to what it is today. There are a lot of people that you and I don't know, but the lifers in this congregation do know, that did unbelievable acts of sacrifice to get this church to where it is. And I'm saying, God, can you use our lives today to do the same thing? Because everything we have, everything, will rust, will wear out, will be disposable, will end up in a landfill someday. The only thing that lasts is what's eternal. Take a look at the second reason why I'm going to ask you to do something sacrificial. Everything we have all comes from God and is to be used for God. I love King David. He doesn't get to build a temple. His son does. But he starts gathering all the materials for it. And he's amazed by the generosity of the Israelites. And notice what he prays to God when he sees everything around him. He says, you know, everything in heaven and on earth is yours, God. Everything we have comes from you. And we give you only what you have given us. Even the materials that we have gathered to build a temple to honor your name come from you. It all belongs to you. And that's from 1 Chronicles chapter 29. And so as, as, again, David's looking at everything, he's like, you know what? We're building this temple not with our stuff. It's all God's stuff. God gave us life. God gave us wisdom. God gave us our bodies. God gave us our reason. He gives us our promotions. He gives us our food. I mean, none of us can invent a banana. Everything that we have is from God's. And so today the Lord says, what of mine that I've given to you have you availed for my purposes? What have you used to extend my kingdom in your own life of the things that I've entrusted to you? And I love how 1 Timothy 6 verse 17 puts it. God wants us to enjoy life. God gives us richly all things to enjoy. God wants you to have an abundant life. He does. But God knows that you'll have the greatest joy in your life if you align your life 
with his purposes. If you take the one life that he's entrusted to you on this side of heaven and use it for serving him in his kingdom. One last point. Why do I want you to make a sacrificial commitment? Well, next Sunday again, it's Commitment Sunday. You're going to come with this you know, commitment card and you're going to offer it to the Lord. Why am I asking you to do that? Because it honors God and it inspires people. God, you know, when your kids, when you teach them and you mentor them and, and then they share with other kids, you as a parent are like, my kid, my kid right there. What do you think happens when the Lord sees us as his kids doing what he's called us to do? He's honored. And when they built that temple, again, in, in Chronicles chapter 29, the amount of things that the Israelites gave to build the temple, it caught on like fire. Everybody was seeing everybody else giving and being generous. And notice what happened. They gave gold and silver and bronze and iron and wood and onyx and turquoise. They gave stones and all kinds of fine stone and marble, all of these in large quantities. And notice what the next thing, it tells us what these things were specifically. 5,000 talents of gold was given. So you have to take 190 times it by 2,000 pounds. That's mind-boggling. And then the silver was twice that. And then on top of that, they gave all these precious stones for building. And here's the, here's the key phrase. The people rejoiced because they gave so freely and wholeheartedly, not to the temple, but to the Lord. And the same thing is true of us. Every single week, whether it's a campaign or your regular giving, you never go to the church, you give it to the Lord. And here's the great thing about that new temple. When it was built, they used really crummy, crappy carpeting. It had the world's worst sound system. And the coffee in the temple was so bad. And you know it wasn't. They gave their best because they knew what God had done for them, freed them, loved them given them hope and a future. That's our story. And that's what I'm asking you to do. I'm asking you next week to join me in making a sacrificial commitment. Because here's how this all boils. How are we going to achieve a $4 million goal in the next three years as a congregation? Well, Rachel and I were talking about this. And as we were talking about putting together our pledge this last week, Rachel said, well, maybe we should begin where we left off with our last pledge. And our last three-year pledge was above and beyond what we thought we could do. And the reason we were talking about this, we said, well, we've got a daughter who's going to be a senior in the fall, and she already took a college visit this week. You know, can we have a free will offering after church? And I've got a son who's going to be in high school next year. And we know what our finances are. You know what I get paid. You established my salary every year. And I'm like, can we do this? And then I'm like, you know, we can't just go with where we left off. We really got to go for this because we believe in this campaign. And it reminded me of 2 Samuel 24, verse 24. David is an old man, and he builds this altar to the Lord. And there's this guy that comes with oxen, and he wants to donate the ox and just give them to for free to sacrifice on this altar. And David says these words, I'm not going to sacrifice to the Lord my God a burnt offering that cost me nothing. In other words, it, it wouldn't be a, a sacrifice it wouldn't be a gift if it didn't cost me anything. That's what I'm asking you to consider this week. You're going to get a pledge card this week that asks for a three-year commitment. And on the top, and then you're going to get a, a giving chart that goes with this. The number one thing on the top of the giving chart is one gift of $400,000. Now, if somebody here wants to give more than that, that's it. You're okay with that. But then it goes down from there. And it says... I want you to think about the importance of reaching the city, what it means to our families, what it means to the kingdom of God, and do these three things. Number one, I want you to consider what would my life be like relationally, spiritually, emotionally if this church disappeared. Secondly, I want you to, to take a step back and just be grateful for what God's given you. God, what have you given me? Everything that I have is yours. What have you graciously entrusted to me? And it'll blow your mind away when you really take a, a moment back and think about it. And then here's the third thing. Pray, Lord, of what you've entrusted to me, what do you want me to give back to you to extend the kingdom of God? What's your will for my life in this campaign? And here's my hope. That 
committed to Jesus Christ, giving in response to all that he's done for us, empowered by his spirit, that those rock-solid pillar families of the church that have given for 10 and 25 and 40-plus years sacrificially to the Lord, that they're going to be amazed by our congregation because we're all going to be in and say, God, to you be the glory and the praise. Amen. Let's close up today by taking a look at what David said in 1 Chronicles 29. I want us to read this responsibly between men and women. Praise be to you, O Lord. Yours, O Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor. Yours, O Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. At this time, we simply respond to God's goodness by giving back to him in tithes, offerings, our lives, everything about us in response to his grace and mercy.